All right, guys, December 26th. It's the day after Christmas. Hope you guys all had a beautiful, awesome day with your families. I was stuck at work, so hope you had hope you had more fun than I did. Anyway, um, Zach went out two days ago. Yeah, Christmas Eve day. He went togging on a little boat with the boys while I was working again. Um, and they said togging was really slow. Um, so I'm actually going to go north and kind of scope out some different areas today. Probably run about 20 to 30 miles, uh, depending on the conditions. As you can see, it's super overcast. It's like quarter after seven. And uh, there's certainly not much sun today. I heard it's going to be cloudy all day with pretty dense fog. So I kind of slept in a little bit. And um, we'll see what those condition looks like, see if it's super foggy or not. Um, I'm very comfortable running in the fog. To me, it's not a big deal. I've been doing it a long, long time, running with my radar um, in low visibility at night. So I'm used to it. Uh, if you're not, don't do the same. Anyway, um, let's get loaded up. You can see Zach has got you know all the buckets all ready to go, the cooler. Um, he's got the troll motor charged. So I just got some stuff here. I got one bag with tackle, um, some striper stuff in there, energy drinks for tank, and then tog jigs in there, and all the camera equipment for y'all in there. Only bringing two rods. And of course the obligatory 24 ounce lava coffee. Super pumped, let's get after it, baby. We're gonna stop at the big boat, load up the crabs. They're in the pen over there. It's probably the swan song on Little Boat, guys. I'm going away January 17th to uh, Florida. I'm going for 10 days. I'll be in Melbourne, Florida, where I went to college. So I'll see you all down there, most likely. See? Just getting uh, shoved off here. Um, definitely feels like it's going to be windier than uh, I think. It's supposed to be like 8 to 10 out of the east-northeast. Uh, I always say if it's east-northeast, you got to add like 10, 10 knots to what they're forecasting. Um, it's deceiving back here in these canals. It's so protective, but you could definitely feel it, feel it puffing. Uh, water is warm. 43.9. Look at last year, we were leaving like 31 degrees back here, but kind of had that bomb cyclone cold front come through. So, um, we'll see y'all. It's been a really weird year, uh, I think for the Todd, just because the water's been so warm and it's been a warm fall and early winter. Uh, so I'll probably fish shallower than normal. Like normally this time of year, we're in like 80 to 100 foot. Uh, I might start at like 65, you know, and see, something like that. So let's go. Let's get over the, stop yapping, get over the big boat, get our, our crab, and, oh, and see how far we run we can actually make. So throw, baby. And we're here at the beautiful Gardner's Basin, Atlantic City, New Jersey. We already saw two boats going out. Crazy. I guess no one works anymore, right? I don't know. I don't get it. Don't you guys work? Comment below how often you work. I, it doesn't seem like on weekdays anybody works anymore. I don't get it. What do I know? Try not get all sorts of soaked. So I had two bushels. They said they didn't use a ton, so let's see. Let's see if we got enough here, huh? Yeah, that's enough for one person. Okay. Alright guys, so off we go. Uh, it's wild, you know, once you have done this for so long and so often you almost kind of get a pulse for every trip even before it starts um zach always says i'm negative all the time but today i actually have a feeling that it's going to be rougher than expected i can see it puffing out of the north and number two i think it's going to be way more crowded than i had thought initially um normally this time of year day after christmas leading up to january or even mid-december to mid-january I'd see like one or two boats out there. Now it's just like, I don't know. Everyone just is out all the time. Any decent day, they just, they can take off work and go out and I don't know. So we'll see. So the, the reef site that I'm going to, it might, might be packed. Like you got to kind of like just fish the, the pieces that aren't taken. So I don't know. We'll see. 20, 30 mile run. I'll know more when I get up there. Come on, man. Alright, let's see what this ocean looks like. Here we go, baby. 
Cross your fingers. All right, guys, so I'm like 12 short of where I was gonna go. Wind kind of kicked up. GoPro never really does it justice. I'm gonna try a little bit closer to home. Let's see. 62, 65 feet of water, really small piece. I'm hoping this one doesn't get picked a lot, so maybe, maybe it'll have some fish. Let's go, here we go. Let's get the troll motor going, and we'll see. We'll do one or two drops here. What the hell, right? Why run all the way up there if we don't have to, right? Yeah. Turn the old girl on. Guys, you can see, there's a wreck coming up there. I don't I don't know what this, I don't know what this piece is, to be honest with you. I don't have my Navionics with me. Zach's got this mark from uh, Flukin. So, yeah, hey, we'll see. Hopefully the troll motor will hold us here. Uh, I've never tog fished this, so we'll see. Yeah, 65 feet of water. Let's get rolling. Okay. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, hello. Zach said they were actually on greens the other day. Typically this time of year, they're on whites, but hey. And, uh, try not get bit, huh? And we'll get a pair of pliers. And we need some skizzers, right? And let's get the fish in here. Okay. All right, now what we're using here is Yield Faithful Reaper, Yield Faithful Reaper Tog Rod. All right, so it's custom JPR. I think it's a little over seven foot. It's from the Hummy. It's from the Honey Lammy Blank. Very simple rigs, nothing to it. So it's really just a dropper loop at the bottom, drop a loop a little higher from that, and then a tiny little leader with 50 pound mono. Start with 50, 5 0 Gamagatsu hooks, and uh, I'll sell my light rod for jigging just in case. Start off like a 5 6 ouncer. All right, guys, you like to give it a little while, but I mean, I wasn't even getting it. I wasn't even getting the slightest hint of a bite. So, needless to say, we're out of here. All right, guys, here we go. Second spot. Let's get going. I got a bite. I got a bite. Come on, eat it. Probably took me. Okay, all right, we're in the game. We're in the game. We got a bite. Still really early in the day. And with an overcast like this, you know, the water's cold. Sometimes it's an afternoon thing. You know, you just got to let up. Zach always says, let these toggers sleep in a little bit, you know? All he really needs is one good drop. Jeez, little ones. Here we go. Finally got one. Finally got a fish, guys. That's definitely a little one. <laughs> that is definitely a little toggart. Hey, desired species. Hey, you. Well, there's one target, there's more targets. Now no bites. Wind's picking up. No bites, unreal. This is some horrible tog fishing. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guy? What? Little bird's talking to me. What's up, guy? How you doing, pal? Where's the tog at? Eat it, will you? Go. That's a togger. Snikes. Are you little? Desired species, but very small. This is horrendous. Oh my god. Alright guys, I'm gonna give this maybe one or two more drops, five, ten more minutes, and then uh, we're out of here. It's just not quite enough life here. I you know. All right, guys, third wreck. I uh, ran to where I was going to start. Uh, we are a little deeper. We're in like 82 foot of water. Uh, I'm kind of at the periphery of this wreck now. I've done well here before. Uh, we will see. There's three other boats on this reef site. Uh, so far, it's been absolutely horrendous. Uh, some of the worst togging I've ever seen. So, we'll see. Oh boy, little guy. Unfortunately, though, all the boats that are out here are spot lockers so they could have already hit this piece well we'll get you back baby 
you back. That's a keeper. Just laying on it, really. It's a keeper. Hey. Barely had you hooked, huh? Keeper easy. All right, guys. So first keeper of the day. That's a good eating size. Um, like I said, I haven't I haven't harvested any togs this entire fall. So all right, that's a good good eating size. We'll bleed him out, get him in the live well. Yeah, I don't I don't mind keeping a few. Okay, we found some life. That's, oh, that was proper bite. definitely short life There's not much I only had that one like nice proper bite you know? We're gonna keep our limit, but the goal is a limit. That's two. That was a half of a white lager with claws, so. Instant bite, baby, instant. Oh, that was a good bite. That was a good bite. All right, they're getting going, baby. They're getting going. Yo, bro. Come at me, bro. I'm all swolled up. That was a good bite. Oh. Snake. These tog, they're really weird animals. It's like some days they want, I, I said it before in prior videos, some days they want like, you know, just a half of a white legger, shell on, no claws. And then next day, same thing, but shell off. I don't know. We're not gonna keep any big ones. I want those like 15 to 18 inches maybe. Now guys, normally by this time, I'm, I'm like togged out. Well, you never get togged out, but normally this time I've done like five to ten talk trips but this bluefin tuna kind of were <laughs> teasing me so needless to say we did that for well, i'll call it a couple trips oh man that's a good one guys oh my god i can't move them oh that's a 10 that's another 10 look at the rod i can't even move them whoa oh guys this is a monster another monster Holy cow. Try and bring them up slow so I don't hurt them. I don't want any barrel trauma. Wow, that's a big one. Third keeper. That's a 10 plus. Another 10. Wow. Wow, it might be close, but awful close. I might even get my net. Hold on. I don't want to hurt him. Yeah. Hey guys, this fish going back, but that's a 10, I'm pretty sure. Yep, pretty darn sure. Pretty big. 
probably very close to 10, at least eight, nine, something like that. Mild little hernia that should reduce, I think, once he gets down there. I think he's gonna swim away just fine, actually. Oh yeah, he kicked off just fine. So pretty sure that hernia will reduce and he'll be okay. Number three. Ah. All right, y'all, it just goes to show you, um, just gotta give these wrecks sometimes a, a little bit of time. Um, had a good amount of shorts there, and then just like that, two decent fish, you know? Just gotta uh, kinda get going, see what the little guys are doing. Get, get anxious and ticked off. You know, it's my wreck, my, my crab. So guys, I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that if you think that was a 10. Uh, in retrospect, probably was. I'm pretty sure. I don't care about weighing it, whatever. You guys, when it's rough like this, I, I hold the rod like this. Sometimes I hold it on my right arm, you've seen that, but when it's rough, this is kind of like a pendulum, so keep it like this, and it keeps that bait on the bottom. That should be deeper. Oh yeah. That should definitely be. That's good eating size there, perfect. Perfect eating size. Measure just to be sure, but it's probably right at 15. And it's a male, that's what I'm looking for to, to harvest here. We'll see. Okay yeah, guys, perfect eating size. He's just about 17 inches, 16 and a half. So again, a male, he's got a weird little tail. I don't know if you can see it there. Wonky little tail, so take that one out of the gene pool maybe. <laughs> Like 18, 19 inches. Come here, girl. Relax yourself. Look how pretty that girl is. She's going back. But yeah, let's keep her over five. All right, guys. So, academically speaking, we have our limit. Uh, I only harvested the two. Might try a little, another, another little piece here. I think I fished this one out pretty good. Did I make the dreaded mistake, leave fish to find fish? All right, guys, fourth wreck. Let's see if there's anything here. All right, this is a really, really low-lying, small piece. I'm hoping it hasn't been picked over, you know? Maybe the, the small ones aren't as picked. Let's see. I think this is the fifth wreck. That fourth one was lifeless, so let's see. It's a little bit higher piece. All right, guys, wreck number eight, I uh, dropped right down. I, I just dropped keeper number six. I had him on and I just pulled the hook like midway up. So, all right, here we go. We got some life again. Let's see. Let's see if we can end the day right here, baby. Pretty sure I got this one foul hooked. For a sec, I thought, oh, that's a decent one, but I think it's foul hook throwback probably. Yeah. You all right? Right to the fin. That one's pretty. Yeah, that one, that one should be a keeper, yeah. That's just a fighter. This rack's waking up, I'm happy. It all got smaller. I kind of want one more for dinner. Oh yeah, keeper. Nice male keeper too, perfect size. Uh, maybe, we'll see, I don't know, I think so. All right guys, that's, that's keeper number six, perfect eating size, just about 15 and a half inches, so. Again, I don't want to take the big one, so I want to take this size. So yeah, all right, cool. 
Yeah, man, just seeing this wreck to kind of wake up. I'm getting bit as soon as it gets down there now. Look at this one, baby. I got foul hooked that one, too. Male, that's a good size eater. She's got the teeth. Look at those teeth. <laughs> got both hooks in them, too. It's a nice male. It's a good size. Get some nice fillets out of that one. We'll keep that one, too. Um, and then that might be all. I think I, I think this is the fourth one I've kept. We'll see. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a good eater. That's the one there, baby. Oh, look how red that one is. Here we go. That's the one. Comes keeper number I say what did I say I said keeper number eight didn't I I told you I told you maybe not it's got a little small oh no that's keeper that's keeper number eight what I say look at this rusty one look at this rusty guy look at the other side of him oh he's already got a hook in him Look, that's not my hook. He's cool, he's going back. He's a warrior. That dude is a warrior. Look how rusty he is. Bye bye, baby, you deserve to swim. Get down there. He had a hook and a line sticking right out of him. Wow. I told y'all, I knew that crab was gonna work. That's Togger. Now guys, I'm going to I'll be in Melbourne, Florida from January 17th to something or other for like 10 days. So hopefully get some waves, see some old friends, fish, surf. I'm even gonna go visit, I think my college, walk around. So hopefully I'll get some fun footage down, uh, down there for you. I might do some fishing down Sebastian Inlet where we used to surf. We'll see, I'll let you know. Oh, I cut bit right away. This wreck is just woke. Just woke right up. All right, guys, that's it. I love y'all. I'm going to keep fishing, but I got no more uh, film to film. <laughs> so I love you. God bless y'all. I uh, hope you enjoyed your holidays. Ah! Hit that like button, subscribe, smash that silly bell. Come on, y'all. 100,000 subscribers. I'm not asking too much, you know. Grab the dude's phone, the girl's phone. Subscribe. That's it. Crabby whackers. All right, y'all, so I ended up with a ninth keeper, actually, so we're back at the house. Just real quick, gotta show you, so super simple. Just gonna do a little egg batter, Italian breadcrumbs seasoned up with, added just some black pepper and some garlic salt, that's it.
Get a skillet nice and hot with some olive oil. Boom, boom. Just a few minutes each side. Super simple, should be delicious. Ooh, golden brown and delicious. Let's see how good it is. Wish you guys had smell vision, look at that. Little Oak Island going on. I like treasure stuff, treasure shows. I'm gonna find treasure one day. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so good. Wish you guys had smell and taste of vision. Mm. All right, adios. Happy New Year.